Welcome to our Case Swap the World episode where we explain why we think Honda's K-Series is the most versatile engine for just about any project build. All right, Peter, why? Why the K24 or the K20? Is it really better than an LS? I mean, it, LSs are kind of like the put them in everything solution for a lot of people, but we think maybe the K-Series is also on that level, don't we? Yeah, I don't necessarily think that the K series is better than an LS or almost you know better than any other swap. But what it does have, I think, is uh, an incredible way to deliver power. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's hard to beat the power of a K series engine. If you're looking at a compact four-cylinder engine, what's going to make more power than a K series? I mean, obviously, things like the 4G63 or the EJ can make a ton of power, but in any form, nothing beats a K series and even with boost, it's pretty tough to be, beat a K, isn't it? Yeah, and if you look at the EJ or the 4G63, those engines do make decent power being turbocharged. A turbocharged K-series can make the same amount of power on a stock block, right? Yeah. Like, let's say that four or 500 horsepower can be reached with that K-motor too, right? Yeah, it's pretty amazing what guys so can get out of those motors even on a stock block with a turbo yeah. or a supercharger or whatever you want. And naturally aspirated, there's really nothing in the league of a K24 for power production. I mean, bone stock, they make sort of like 200 to 220 at the wheel and then the basic like cams, standalone ECU and a good tune, you can get up into the 250 wheel horsepower range and you know, getting to 300 wheel horsepower out of those motors is pretty easy now, pretty commonplace. In fact, places like four piston can sell you a complete long block that makes like over 300 at the wheel for about seven, eight K I think is what the price is on one of those motors. But keep in mind that is a like super high end fully built engine from one of the most reputable places in the world. You could, you could build it yourself for less than that, but the reliability of a four piston engine, I think is probably pretty hard to beat. Yeah, and I mean, if you, you know, spend double that money, you can get an engine that makes 500 horsepower NA yeah. out of a four cylinder, which is incredible. And, I can't imagine and, how that feels. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It and must rev to like 11K or something too. Now for a lot of the rear wheel drive crowd that is typically, you know, in the, in the Japanese sports cars has been swapping LSs, now there's this option of the K motor, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's more and more of those happening as we know with say your K240 and uh, K Miatas, KFDs, KF2000s, KNSXs. I mean, we're seeing Ks go into a lot of rear wheel drive platforms now and it can, be, it can be done at least as affordably as an LS swap and it's a more compact package, which is I think something we'll talk about a little bit more later, but from a power per displacement standpoint, I mean, you know, uh, it's very, very difficult to beat a K-Series. You'd have to get into some really exotic engines to meet the, the specific output of a K-Motor for its displacement. I think another reason why the K-Swap is such a good option is the aftermarket support is, I think, bar none for four cylinders out there. The Honda community is massive. You can pretty much get any type of uh, cam, any type of piston, like intake manifolds, exhaust manifolds, turbocharged NA, ITVs, the list goes on and on for aftermarket parts to like build your perfect setup as you might want to call it for a K-series motor. I think that it's, it's such a huge help to making these K-swaps work. And now add the rear wheel drive portion of this, which is starting to open up as well. And that aftermarket is continuing to grow. grow. I know Kamiata just started coming out with some uh, BMW E30 swaps. So those are gonna be turnkey. Toge Factory, I'm pretty sure has developed a K-series into a 240SX, much like what we did. I think another thing worth mentioning is the all-wheel drive conversion thing is booming Very right true. Now too. Like our buddy Nick at Tuning by Nick is converting his RSX to an all-wheel drive system. And you know, I think the one thing you could say against a K-swap is that in a really big, heavy vehicle, just doesn't have the, the displacement, the torque. That's where you know a diesel or a V8 or a 2J makes more sense. But other than those types of vehicles, I think a K swap is pretty awesome in just about anything. Uh, there was Scotty G's K swap 911 that was in Turn 14's booth at uh, SEMA last year. They're popping up, man. I think you're just going to see Ks in more and more different things. Actually, I've seen a K swap Evo. You know, you you touch on a good subject too, and I think with the the displacement aspect, that is a downfall, but you can have two options. You have a K20 and a K24. So if you want a nice high revving engine that feels very, you know, sports car-y, you can go to that K20. 
But if you want a, a, an engine that's gonna de develop more torque, that's gonna give you that broader power band, you do have a K2 for. So there are options and I really do like the flexibility that you get with that, with the older K series. I guess maybe that takes us to the next point of conversation and that's price. Yeah. And I think K swaps are actually quite affordable. I mean, you can do them on a budget. You can also spend a pile of money on them if you wanna go big on it. But we've been able to get K's dirt cheap. I mean, that, that K20 that we took out of an RSX cost us basically nothing by the time we parted out that car. And even if you just go and buy a K24 or a K20 off of your local like Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever, they're under $1,000 now. They're really pretty, pretty darn cheap. I don't think there's a cheaper engine out there that you can get. Not a high performance one anyway. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like even SR20s, and 240s are becoming expensive, yeah. right? And who wants to go out and spend four grand on one of those? And then there's just a, a pile of problems that you run into. You really need to rebuild that motor where you can just, you know, put all that money into a K swap mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about parts availability and whatnot. So there, there's compelling evidence that it is one of the best budget motors out there. Another factor to consider is reliability. And I think the, the K series is the, the number one reliable engine in, in my opinion. I don't think there's a more reliable motor out there. Honda builds some of the best motors. I mean, guys at the extreme end of the spectrum making, you know, seven, 800 wheel horsepower, they'll blow head gaskets or have the kind of problems you might expect it when you're really stressing a motor, but a low stress K-series engine is incredibly hard to blow up. The only kind of like weak points that we could even call it that would be say the timing, ch timing chain tensioners. We know that those are prone to failure in like really high mileage examples where the chain may have stretched or where you're revving it really high. But there are aftermarket solutions for that, including companies like K-Tune offering uh, better tensioners. And I guess the other thing would be, you know, the usual, you gotta keep oil in them. Hondas like to be overfilled a little bit with oil. You need really good baffling in your pan or you'll starve the bearings. One of the other advantages with a K-Swap is just how compact it is. I mean, being an inline four motor, it's a fairly tall motor. So you, you could run into hood clearance issues, but because it's a relatively short motor, it'll fit into just about any engine they wanted. I mean, we really struggled fitting the 2J into the M3, which is a fairly big engine bay, uh, and it's, you know, their, their kit already exists to fit it in there, but it was still a really, really tight fit, where fitting the K into your 240 or into just about anything else is pretty simple, isn't it? There's just less struggle with space constraints. There's something to be said for choosing an engine that makes noises that stir your soul, and that's a bit of a knock on the K-Series, at least for me. For sure. It's not a great sounding engine. It's the, terrible, the actually. The K-Series has a really nice, you know, like clean sound to it. But to me, the K-Series has a very like, I don't know, just a fuzzy, kind of echoey, a rasp. raspy it's noise. It's yeah, real it's bad a rasp. Great sounding engine, so. And you need to go to a three inch exhaust on the K-Series to make good power. And as soon as you go to the three inch exhaust, they don't sound good. So if you're looking for a, uh, an engine that's gonna deliver that really like soul stirring noise, then the K-Series is probably not for you. A 2J or an LS is probably a better option, so. It's not like we're fully, you know, brainwashed by the K-Series army out there. We understand that there are some limitations and even from a packaging standpoint, being a relatively tall engine, you do run into problems with oil pan clearance to the ground and to the subframes and that kind of stuff. I will say that I do love the driving experience other than the sound. They deliver power in a really instant, instant way. I mean, they have incredible throttle response and they seem to just make more power, you know, more, they deliver their power in a way that's so usable. Very overachievable. They are. They are like they punch above their weight somehow. Even though my my K24 was only 250 at the wheel, that car could keep up with other cars that were making over 300 at the wheel. And it's just because the way it delivered its power across such a broad range and it's geared so well, the car was faster than it should have been. So there's just something about the K series and how efficient they are. They really do punch above their weight. And beyond that. I mean, being able to rev an engine to 8K reliably all day long is compelling. It's just fun revving an engine out, isn't it? I mean, we've track tested a bunch of K-Swap cars, haven't we? We've tried uh, like Lander's K-Swap Miata, which was on a, 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 like an autocross setup. So it was on like only on a 205 tire and it was still a 120 flat car at our local track TMP here, which is like on par with an S2, like our modified S2000. It's on par with like a Camaro Z28. It's properly fast. In a, just a K-Swap Miata with like not even the most aggressive wheel and tire package, so. And the K-Swap 240 is also just another great example 
That was a car that was untested the first track day out after we had swapped that thing and it went a 121 flat with a junkyard K24 motor that made 200 wheel. Like we literally did not touch anything. It was just like a ton of fun it to was. drive. It yeah, really, really had was. that essence of like a, a K series even though it has a, a BMW gearbox behind it. Mm -hmm. But it was still very quick. Yeah, it was surprisingly fast and it's only gonna get better because we had a balance issue. It was understeering a lot because we didn't have the right size sway bars on it and the brake balance wasn't very good. Like that car is going to be, I think, faster than our S3000 ever was once we get it sorted out. What else have we tried? We've tried like the usual. Yeah, we should talk about stuff. the front wheel drive stuff because there's there's no way omitting it. I I think by far one of the most popular things to do to any front wheel drive Honda is K swap it, and for good reason. I know there's the B and K debate, but. <laughs> It's kind of not a fair fight. I just find the K motor is so superior to the B and that's why so many people use it. That's why it's just, it makes so much power NA. Yes, B, B series motors can make really, really good power boosted. Yeah. And I think there's a simplicity factor to them too. That stronger gearboxes too. Exactly, yeah. that, that can't be overlooked. Mm -hmm. But like NA wise, it's just the perfect amount of power, like 250 to 300 horsepower in a front wheel drive Honda around a racetrack is just so, so good. It feels, it like tickles your senses. It's, it's yeah. all right there. It is, like Andy's EK hatchback that we tried had a K24 in it that he's putting into an S2000, by the way, which made I think about 275 at the wheel. And uh, I didn't get the greatest lap time out of that car just because the setup was fighting me a little bit, but man, the power in the straightaway is just awesome. And 275 in a 2200 pound front wheel drive car feels pretty damn special. And, I mean, 275 is so attainable with those motors now. It, it, it's nuts. And speaking of front wheel drive cars, of course, there's also the FK8, isn't there? This is the new Civic Type R. And that is the next generation of K-Series motors. We've done a bunch of track tests with that car. It is incredibly fast. It's a 121 car, basically bone stock. And uh, like going one sub 20 in TFP in one of those would be relatively easy with the right mods. And that really kind of opens up the discussion of like, where's the future of the K-Swap going? I think it really is probably going in the, in the K20C1 direction or the K20C4 direction, which is like the detuned version of that motor that's in the Accord Sport and the RDX. And I know Brian from Hasport is super keen on that Accord motor because it's gonna go into millions of cars, which means there's gonna be millions of them in junkyards in the not so distant future. Which is gonna mean it's gonna be a very affordable engine with a slightly smaller turbo than the Type R couple other like small differences that are more or less irrelevant so take one of those motors put it in anything and it'll make 300 horsepower easy Boom. easy with put just a, a tune probably on it. on it yeah when you get into the, the turbos and whatnot yeah like, for sure I think that's a huge portion of where the segment is going I think maybe that's a wrap on this PT I think so the one thing we should end on is I've been thinking about a crazy idea of okay. taking a like K swap a, a K motor yeah. and swapping it into a Ferrari and not just any Ferrari, like an old 80s Ferrari, I think Magnum PI, Ooh, like 308, 328. 328. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be super Ooh, yeah. cool. And actually, you know, like those old Ferraris, their engine performance isn't exactly spectacular. No, they don't make they these don't make amazing power. noises. I mean, they sound good, but they make no I just power. don't find it, especially the, the 308, uh, 328. Yeah, like, yeah, they're, yeah. Just, they're not great. They don't make a ton of power. Can you imagine a 500 wheel horsepower K series in one of those? Yeah. And uh, you know us ripping it around a racetrack. Yeah. I think that sounds like that sound cool. an amazing idea. It's just finding a, a Ferrari chassis may be a little bit problematic. So if you guys are watching this video, and you, you have a 308 sitting in your garage you, with you, no you motor seen in it, one or something give us like a that. Call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would love, love, love to get our hands on one of those for a 2021 project build. I think that would be absolutely killer. Explosion and support we're seeing, I even for that. like. Doing it's muted. Like, how does it even My do that? My phone did that the other day too, where Siri just jumped out of nowhere. Siri, man, for the like, first.